Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll be going through the Fletcher Group's synthesis of Tafluprost, published at the end of March 2020 in Organic Letters. So, Tafluprost. Tafluprost is a prostaglandin F2 alpha analog that was developed for the treatment of open angle glaucoma and ocular hypertension. When this group was thinking about how to approach this target, they saw an interesting opportunity for asymmetric catalysis. Their idea is that by starting from an allylic halide precursor, it might be possible to carry out an enantioconvergent rhodium-catalyzed allylic substitution reaction. With an appropriately substituted precursor, they imagined that it could be plausible to think about elaborating the cyclopentene core to install a carboxylic acid handle, which they proposed would allow them to make the final target through further manipulations. So, taking a closer look at this enantioconvergent allylic substitution, the Fletcher group decided to use an asymmetric suzuki miyara approach which would require the synthesis of these two fragments in order to get the ball rolling. First, let's take a look at fragment 1. To make fragment 1, they started with cyclopentadiene and carried out an epoxidation with peracetic acid, and converted the resulting epoxide into a 1,3-dioxalane by treatment with ethereal BF3 and acetone. Then, they used urea hydrogen peroxide and trifluoracetic anhydride to carry out an epoxidation on the remaining alkene to arrive at this epoxide. Now, treatment of the epoxide with inbuli and diethylamine resulted in the opening to give this allylic alcohol, which could be treated with NCS and triphenylphosphine to give the allylic chloride with the relative stereochemistry shown, obtaining fragment 1 as a racemate. For fragment 2, they took this monoprotected 1,2-diol and carried out a sworn oxidation, followed by an alkynylation with a protected acetylene unit, then a TBAF deprotection. A Desmartin oxidation resulted in the alkynone, which they used as a substrate for a deoxyfluorination reaction to arrive at this propergylic difluoride. Finally, to convert the alkyne to the alkenial veronic acid, they treated with diisopropyl perenyl borane, which was a reagent developed by the Sneakus group for this purpose. Then, in order to obtain the product in pure form, they made the potassium trifluoroborate salt by treating with KF and acetonitrile, which allowed them to use a filtration to purify the product. After that, they got back to the boronic acid using silica, water, and a little bit of heat. So now they had both fragments ready to go. After some reaction optimization, they found that they could use dimethyl segfos to get a good yield, an excellent diastereo, and an antiselectivity in this asymmetric suzuki miara coupling. They propose that this reaction is a dynamic kinetic asymmetric transformation, or DICAT, where both enantiomers of the allylic chloride starting material pass through the same pseudo-meso-rhodium pialyl complex. Here we're saying pseudo-meso instead of just meso, because it looks like there's a mere plane on the substrate, but the catalyst it's bound to has chirality that disrupts the mere plane. Afterwards, they carried out some protecting group manipulations in order to be able to engage the alkene effectively. First, they treated with acetic acid and water at 40 degrees to remove the acetone ketal. Then they were able to form the cyclic carbonate using triphosgene and pyridine. Now, they were ready to elaborate the cyclopentene. They treated with palladium DPPF dichloride, which they used to generate a palladium pialyl complex that could be attacked by a malonate nucleophile. Subsequent hydrolysis of the ethyl esters of the malonate resulted in the malonic acid, which could then be subjected to carbonyl diamidazole followed by sodium hydroxide to allow a decarboxylative activation of the dicarboxylic acid, yielding the monoacid. Now they were able to use the pendant carboxylic acid to execute a nice ring-closing tactic. First they carried out an iodolactinization to arrive at this cyclized product, then they used a radical deiodination with tributyl tin hydride and AIBN. Now, to open the lactone and complete the synthesis, they used Dival to reduce the lactone to the lactol, which could then be used as a substrate for a Z-selected Wittig reaction. Finally, treatment with isopropyl iodide and DBU allowed the installation of the isopropyl ether and the completion of the synthesis of Tafluprost. I like the synthesis a lot because of the efficiency of the asymmetric suzuki Miura coupling, which allowed them to come in with a racemic building block and an achiral building block and end up with an enantione-enriched prostaglandin core. That's really nice to me. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please support us by liking and subscribing, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.